This is Witchbase News for Friday the 9th of June 2023. I'm Commander Burr. An Elite Dangerous news this week. Patch 15.02 arrives. You can now build your own Lego SRV, there's a Glaive survival guide from the AXI, the successor to EDDB is looking for more developers, get set to witness the first landable atmospheric planetary collision and more. As always if you enjoy our videos please do hit the like button and if you haven't already be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any of our Elite Dangerous content. You can also join our Patreon if you would like to help directly support our work. Links to that and everything else are below. We start this week with a perennial favourite of ours here at the pit, Lego. Serial creator and SPVFA admin commander Nick Webb has been working on a custom Lego build for a Scarab SRV. I'm pleased to say that not only is the build complete but Nick has also published the complete brick listing and build instructions onto Twitter for commanders to download and build themselves. The instructions are ...I'm going to use the word proper ...are proper and look like they've come from a bona fide Lego kit which of course they didn't. The build comes complete with a commander figure, 4 cargo canisters and working cargo storage area and I flipping love it. You'll find a link in the video description below to grab the brick list and instructions for yourself if you fancy hitting up your favourite generic building brick online emporium and cobbling together your own SRV. A couple of weeks back we published some community gathered tidbits on surviving an encounter with a Thargoid Glaive, the first of the Green Meanies new Hunter class vessels. The Glaive appears to be specifically designed to disrupt a pilots ability to move with any degree of urgency and even comes equipped with the tools to prevent commanders firing up their frameshift drive and jumping away. The galaxy's premier gloopy alien menace removal and elimination community the AXI have now had time to conduct their own altogether more scientific and measured approach to the problem of what to do about the Glaive and I'm frankly overjoyed to report that a guide from the ever competent and informative Commander Mechan has now surfaced. The fantastic guide deals with everything you need to know about how the Glaive operates, what tools it employs against you, where to find them, their weaknesses and how to kill them and importantly how to escape and evade from Glaive encounters if combat is not an option for you. As is the case with all of Mechan's stuff the guide is succinct, well presented and gets straight to the points you need to know. It's an absolute must watch if you're operating in Thargoid controlled space. As always you'll find a link to the video in the description below. As promised last week patch 15.02 arrived in the game this week bringing with it a fairly huge raft of fixes. There was some confusion in the community when the patch initially arrived as FDev had used the words quality of life update to describe the patch. Understandably a portion of the community took quality of life to mean quantifiable and deliberate changes to existing features in the game. For example improving the flow of a frequently travelled UI or I dunno adding a guy to refuel fleet carriers or keybinds for functions like docking computers and supercruise assist. What Frontier meant in this particular instance by quality of life was however numerous bug fixes whose implementation would improve the quality of life for commanders because obviously they're not then faced with that bug again. With that minor comms wiggle sorted out then what did we get? Whilst the lion's share of the fixes in 15.02 do centre around the more recently implemented content and features such as glaives, titans and revenants and the various ways and means they utilise to rapidly and hilariously disassemble both your ship and body possibly the bigger headliners were the fixes that had been outstanding for much longer away from that newer content. At the top of the patch notes that you'll find linked below are fixes for lateral thruster rotational correction issues, the mining pulse wave scanner not actually highlighting high yield rocks in planetary rings, 
needless repetition of the objective failed prompt triggering when cancelling an on foot mission and insufficient numbers of targets arriving at a settlement for raid and massacre missions. This is where a mission requires 10 kills and where 9 targets show up meaning you can't complete the mission. These particular issues have been outstanding for a year or more and in the case of the cited log for rotational correction issues that was originally created in November 2021 so it's really good to see these issues resolved finally. One other point of note in case it's valuable to you the deployed frontline solutions turrets that spawn at surface conflict zones now have a 10 minute downtime when disabled as opposed to the 2 minute downtime that has been in place since the turrets were first added to the game just after Odyssey launched 2 years ago. The notes specifically mention that the change should encourage my word not FDEVs commanders with surface attack capable vessels to now actively engage the turrets and open up a window of opportunity for ground engagement or attacks on dropships. That sounds awesome on paper but I remain to be convinced that the turrets themselves contribute enough in terms of firepower to warrant themselves being assaulted in the first instance. I'm aware that they exist and that they shoot at things. I'm not convinced that shooting seriously affects anyone or anything actually engaged in the meaningful actions in the conflict zone. I'm genuinely curious to know if I'm missing something with regard to Frontline's deployed turrets so if your experience has been different do please let me know in the comments below. You may remember a few weeks back we reported on the demise of the Elite Dangerous suite of tools at eddb.io. Upon the announcement of the websites imminent departure the community immediately leapt into action to begin designing and coding a replacement. That replacement is to be called the Elite Dangerous Pilots Network or EDPN and one of the minds behind the project Reddit user Llama Air, took to the platform this week looking to recruit more developers to the cause and also encourage ideas from the community at large on what the site should include and how it might improve on what eddb.io did so well. They are particularly interested in front end developers that have experience with React or back end developers familiar with Spring slash Java. If you think you might be able to help or want to ensure your ideas are heard then head over to the EDPN Discord server which you'll find linked below. Starting this Saturday the 10th of June it's once again Buckyball week. This time out of the gate the ever imaginative Buckyball Racing Club presents a challenge to the pilots of Elite Dangerous in the form of Tunnel-ish Vision hosted by Commander Segur. Running until the 18th of June the race requires its terminally determined pilots to ...let's call it explore the superstructure and tight spots of the bubble at speed with likely predictably explosive results. As always with all things buckyball the barriers to entry are extremely low meaning just about anyone can participate if they so desire. To get involved yourself or at the very least view the results of others involved in the race check out the link to the competition on the official forums which is of course posted below this video. The ever vigilant all seeing collective of apocalypse seeking scientists at Canon Research notified this week about an impending planetary collision taking place within relative spitting distance of the bubble. Whilst planetary collisions in a galaxy as vast as Elite are perhaps not as rare as you might imagine what makes this one particularly noteworthy is that one of the colliding bodies is a landable atmospheric world making the collision in the system Sinof ZL-OB51-0 the first of its kind. The target system is around 770 light years outside the bubble and the collision is expected to begin around 1.30pm UTC on Monday the 12th of June. Don't go expecting any cataclysmic explosive events to occur. Planetary collisions are in fact essentially a bug and in reality the planets will gracefully slide through each other but these occurrences are no less spectacular for it especially as you can witness it on foot at ground zero. The entire event is expected to last around 24 hours with likely spectacular views at the very least for an hour or two either side of the actual collision so plenty of opportunity to witness one of Elite's more unique foibles. You'll find the system name and all the details in the description below this video. 
Are you planning on building yourself a Lego SRV? Will you perhaps be volunteering for the Elite Dangerous Pilots Network, racing in Buckyball or travelling to witness a planetary collision? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then ….o7 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.